What's up, everybody? Let's Talk Jets Radio. Quick video here. Uh, apologies for no stream last night. That's completely on me. Had all sorts of issues getting StreamYard started. Um, so, again, apologies for that. A lot of the topics, though, they were going to center around the second preseason game, what we learned about the roster. The Jets, of course, made a bunch of cuts yesterday. Uh, Elijah Riley, Pinheiro, a uh, couple offensive linemen, linebacker Kai Nakua. Nobody that we really expected to make the roster other than maybe Pinheiro. So the kicking competition, it goes to Zerline. But looking at the rest of the roster, and again, we did learn a lot, I think, from the second preseason game. Of course, the starters didn't play. I do like that Sal is going to play them in the third preseason game. I hated the idea of, you know, going into Baltimore with a lot of our starters really not playing at all in the preseason. Um, but what we learned about a lot of the guys on the back end, and, you know, I'll start with the quarterbacks. You know, I know there's a lot of support right now for Strebler. The problem is I don't really feel like he's the, the kind of accurate quarterback that this offense would really need if, you know, you have to rely on your third quarterback to actually play. You know, yes, he's mobile. He brings a, a different dynamic, a different element to the offense, but it almost feels like he'd have to change things around if he was actually needed. Whereas Mike White, he showed you he could operate within the offense last year for all his faults. He could still go through his progressions. He could take a hit. He could stay in the pocket. He could make some throws. So I just feel like he's the, the safer option if you do need your third quarterback. Going to the running backs, we know that Hall and Carter, those guys are locked in. Where I think it does get interesting still is with Tevin Coleman. He's looked good, you know, uh, the other night, you know, he had a nice cutback run. It looks like he's got that speed. He could still return kicks. Versatile, veteran, all the reason to keep him, but he's also on a one-year deal. And you look at a guy like Zonovan Knight, and I think you got to ask, like, what is the drop-off between Coleman and Knight? Of course, you know, things like blitz pickup and just knowledge of the playbook, you know, probably a big drop-off there. Um, but as far as actual ability, you know, does it make sense to maybe, you know, try to invest in Zonovan Knight, considering he's an undrafted free agent, you'd have him for the next three years at next to nothing financially, and between him, Carter, and Hall, you'd be paying your entire running group essentially absolutely nothing. So it's something to consider, and the reason I bring it up is because I don't think they can afford, when you start looking at some of the other positions, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think they can afford to keep four running backs. And, you know, I have three running backs right now, and I also have only five receivers with Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, uh, Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, and then Jeff Smith as the number five. Um, I, I, I I could definitely make a case for Denzel Mims. I, I want to keep him on the roster. I, I think when he's been out there, he's he's shown some ability, especially downfield. He can make some of those contested catches. He's a big body that you could put on the outside if Corey Davis does go down. But there seems to be something else going on behind the scenes, whether it's, you know, attitude or work ethic or something. You know, it seemed like that was an issue in year two. He worked his ass off in the offseason. I've been impressed by what we've seen, you know, minus the, the two penalties. But it just seems like for whatever reason, he's kind of stuck in that doghouse, hasn't really been given an opportunity to play early in games. So I just feel like the organization doesn't really view him as a long-term piece. I also think that he's probably frustrated and would probably, you know, like a chance somewhere else where he can get some legitimate playing time. So I'm going with five receivers. Um, you know, guys like Calvin Jackson, you know, I think he's a good practice squad guy. Tariq Black, he's been given an opportunity. He could also go to the practice squad. Irvin Charles, he's been making plays, big body. But with keeping five receivers, I'm going to keep four tight ends where, you know, the three that are obvious are Cager, Conklin and Ruckert, and then the fourth being Lawrence Cager, who's really starting to make an impact. Back-to-back preseason games, he's making plays. Uh, just, you know, really good uh, speed after the catch. He's athletic, converted receiver. Um, so he kind of fills that hybrid role where if you do need that extra receiver, if somebody goes down, he can fill that role. Um, you wonder, you know, whether or not he can handle blocking as far as being a legitimate tight end. Um, but certainly you got to also look at in that group, can somebody fill that H-back role? You know, we like to think it could be Ruckert, maybe Uzama. But that H-back role is valuable in this offense. So, you know, Wesco, he had two penalties the other night. I don't think he's going to be the answer, and we haven't really noticed Bowden at all. So I would like to think somebody in that group can fill that role. And, you know, as long as one of those guys can do it, you know, I think it makes sense to keep an, an athletic guy like Lawrence Cager in the fold. Uh, you go to the offensive line, and this is where it gets tricky. You know, I, I go back and forth between keeping 9 and 10. You know, the starters being Brown, Tomlinson, McGovern, ABT, and Fant. You got Feeney and Herbig as, you know, your your two depth guys along the interior. And then do you keep two tackles or do you keep three? I think a lot of that depends on whether or not you think Max Mitchell is actually capable of playing. I think there's a good chance this is kind of like a redshirt year for him. Certainly he's shown some ability, but would I want him on the field, you know, fourth round pick? He's still got a lot of developing to do. I, I would prefer him being inactive most Sundays. So, you know, are you just keeping Adoga as your lone 
tackle, and then you know maybe you're shifting guys like AVT or somebody else over if you have uh, more than one injury. You know, I, I don't really like the idea of that. Do you keep somebody like Grant Hermans, uh, McDermott? He was injured early in camp. You know, what, what's his status right now? So a lot of questions to answer. I, I have a feeling just based on Brown's age um, that they might lean towards actually keeping 10 offensive linemen with three backup tackles, assuming Mitchell may not be ready to play. So right now I have them with 10 offensive linemen, and I also have 10 defensive linemen too. It might sound like a lot, uh, but there's also a lot of talent there. Some of the cuts are going to be ridiculously tough. The eight guys that I think are pretty much locked in are uh, Quinn and Williams, uh, Sheldon Rankins. Even though you can make an argument, you know, with some of the guys that have stepped up, you know, he's making I, I think five and a half million dollars that they can clear up if they want to cut him. Um, but I think just talent-wise, what he offers um, as a pass rusher along the interior, unless they feel like you know John Franklin Myers could do that. Uh, but for, for right now, I think he's safe. Solomon Thomas, uh, John Franklin Myers, Carl Lawson, Jermaine Johnson, Michael Clemens, and um, and Jacob Martin. Those eight guys, I think, are locked in. And I want to say that Bryce Huff, he's also locked in. You know, he's been banged up a little bit. You know, so d does that affect his spot at all? I feel like he's still safe with what he offers as a pass rusher as well. So with those nine, who does the last spot go to? I, I wanted to say early in camp, Nathan Shepard, just based on his ability to stop the run. Um, I think you need some depth along the interior. You lost Fadukasi in the offseason. But now you got guys like Tanzel Smart. He's been stepping up. Vinny Curry, you know, is there a spot for him? Bradley and I, he had the strip sack in return. Jonathan Marshall, J uh, Jabari Zuniga, you know, Sala even said he looks like a different player in camp. <clears throat> so, you know, where do you go with that last spot? What do you value more? Somebody that maybe offers you a little bit more of a pass rush or, you know, stuffing the run along the interior? You know, I, I think maybe some of that also depends on, you know, how ready Michael Clemens is to play. Jermaine Johnson, we haven't really noticed him at all. Is he going to be a serious part of the rotation this year, or is he maybe a year or two away? So I'm going with 10 defensive linemen. That last spot right now, I think it it might actually go to Nathan Shepard, you know, if they do value, you know, the, the run-stuffing ability that he offers, uh, minus the, the penalties. Uh, going to linebacker, a week ago I would have said six. Right now I'm going with five. Uh, C.J. Mosley, he's locked in. Quan Alexander. Um, Quincy Williams, and then the, the two second-year players with Nashville Dean and Sherwood, who have shown a lot this preseason. Uh, the guy that I did have making the roster, who I think is kind of on the bubble now, is Marcel Harris, uh, the converted safety. He, he I thought he had a, a pretty strong uh, first couple weeks in camp. Um, just somebody that also knows the defense from San Francisco. But now that he's banged up, you know, do you maybe just keep five linebackers and go with that extra safety? Um, so I'm going with uh, six cornerbacks. Interesting decision on the back end. You, you know that Sauce Reed, Bryce Hall, even though he's been struggling, he's going to be safe. Brandon Eccles, Carter as your slot guy. And then what do you do for the sixth spot? Unless you keep seven and then you got to trim somewhere else. Um, you know, Justin Hardy, he's your special, t uh, special teams ace. Brant Boyer absolutely loves him. Javelin Guidry, he's been pretty solid. He also provides depth in the slot. Is there somebody else that can provide that depth in the slot if, if Carter goes down? So I think they got to figure that out. Right now, I might actually lean towards Gidry, assuming that you do keep somebody like Jeff Smith, who gives you uh, some special teams ability as well. And then you go four tight ends, Whitehead, uh, Pinnock, Joyner, who's been struggling a little bit, but I still think they keep him as a vet. And then I'm going Will Parks over Ashton Davis. I think he's just showing you a little bit more. And then your three special teams guys, Zerline, Braden Mann, and Thomas Hennessy. So just going right down the list, uh, three quarterbacks, three running backs, five receivers, four tight ends. 10 offensive linemen, 10 defensive linemen, five linebackers, six corners, four safeties, three special teams. So where I think, you know, you can maybe make some changes if you want to get rid of somebody like McDermott or one of those extra tackles, if you want to, you know, put some faith in Mitchell, you know, possibly being that guy or maybe being able to store somebody else on the practice squad if he's needed. Um, and then maybe you can keep a sixth wide out. Maybe you can keep a fourth running back. I think maybe a sixth linebacker could also make a lot of sense because then you'd be pretty thin right there if somebody were to go down. Also, I think it could make a lot of sense to keep Gidry and Hardy and just go at seven corners. So a lot of interesting decisions to make. Wonder how much of this might play out in the third preseason game. But like I said, I, I do like that the starters are going to play. I think it's needed. I think it's necessary. A lot of this team is still very young. A lot of new pieces. you got to make sure that they at least have some time to gel before Baltimore. So hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry this video was a little long. Talk to you guys later.